Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Well, what do we got today? Compelled to sell? Iran versus Israel starting to heat up. Is it possible? Taiwan is shaking. And the white people of black people? <laughs> There it is. Welcome to Sigma Tiger News, where a man in a tiger mask reads you the news. And guess what? The mask comes off after 10K likes or 10K subs. Uh, it's just a little fun we're having here. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. What the heck is going on in the world today? Our council tried to force us to sell our 200,000 pound home to make room for asylum seekers. Elderly couples horror after strongly worded letter lands on their doorstep. Hmm. What the heck? Compelled to sell. An elderly couple who had just moved into their 200,000 pound house were horrified to receive a letter from their council suggesting the property could be subject to compulsory purchase and used to house asylum seekers. Jose and Ted Saunders, or Josie maybe, uh, said they were insulted and shocked when the strongly worded letter from the Northamptonshire Council, which has never balanced its own books, dropped on their mat last month. It said their neat mid-terraced house in Rushton near Wellingboro was deemed to be an empty property or was derelict, and the council could even force them to sell it. Can you imagine? I couldn't believe it, said retired uh, carer Josie, 76. We moved to Rushton to help provide child care for my granddaughter and found this nice little place to live. The idea of forcing us to sell it to make room for refugees and asylum seekers seems totally wrong. Here's an image of the two uh, people, the elderly couple. Lovely bunch. Here's an image of the letter. We are running you as we have reason to believe that the above-named premises or land is empty or unused and that you are the owner. We would like to take this opportunity to find out what your intentions are for the properties or site. It may be that you already have proposals, but if not, we can give you some advice on options available to you to bring the premises site back into use. The government has identified empty, privately owned properties as potential cause for blight within communities as well as wasted resource at a time of high housing need. It is setting targets for local authorities and requiring action by them to reduce this problem. And then they have a resettlement team. They go on to say, uh, it's headed empty properties and sites initiative had their exact address and bold and stated. We are writing as we have reason to believe the above named premises, blah, 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 blah. Government has identified empty privately owned properties. Letter continued that the council was seeing a considerable increase in positive immigration decisions being made in favor of asylum seekers, mainly single men, and the authority was struggling to source suitable accommodations for them. Uh, it added the ideal long-term solution would be to provide accommodations by using empty properties, which would benefit owners and the project. It said the council could make a compulsory purchase order on the property. What the heck is that? It was all the more worrying as we'd only moved in last November, so we still hadn't received the deeds for the house. Retired driving instructor Ted, 78, said his wife called the council and asked what was going on. Three days later, they received an apology saying that their staff had mistakenly earmarked the house for possible compulsory purchase. All right, so what the heck is compulsory purchase? CPOs allow public bodies to force homeowners to sell up if their property obstructs a regeneration project or it's for the greater public good. That definition sounds scary because it uses the word force. But in fact, the authority who issues the CPO to you cannot force you to sell. What it means is they're applying for the powers to do so. So they'll get a court-ordered injunction basically saying the property is not in use. It's derelict. It could be used. It's a valuable resource and we need it. So guess what? We're going to take it. And here's your check in the mail. Major building projects, including housing developments or flood defense works, improving or installing services, for example, water mains or road or rail improvement, clearing areas of bad housing, which may include building new developments afterwards. Yeah, so it's all in the guise of seizing your property. And what is going on? We talked about uh, silent prayer, you know. Apparently, it's the worst protest of ever, and you must be removed. So six pro-life activists convicted of federal FACE Act charges face over a decade in prison. The defendants had been charged with a blockade that occurred at the Carafem Health Center Clinic in Mont Juliet, Tennessee in 2021. Half a dozen pro life activists on Tuesday were found guilty of violating a federal law that forbids protesters from blocking the entrances of abortion clinics. 
The U.S. Department of Justice said in a press release that the six defendants in the Nashville, Tennessee federal trial were each convicted of a felony conspiracy against the rights and a Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act offense. The Federal FACE Act prohibits violent, threatening, damaging, and obstructive, that's the one, that's the only one they can get, conduct intended to injure, intimidate, or interfere with the right to seek, obtain, or provide reproductive health services was signed in law by President Bill Clinton in 1994. So it's not new. The defendants had been charged with a blockade that occurred at the Carafem uh, Health Center Clinic in Montreal, Tennessee, 2021. Government said it in its press release this week that the defendants, Chester Gallagher, Heather Idani, Calvin Zastro, and Coleman Boyd, Paul Vaughn, and Dennis Green, had engaged in a conspiracy to prevent the clinic employees from providing and patients from receiving reproductive health services. Fair enough. Don't stand in front of the door. Uh, but guess what? If you're in Britain and you stand across the street, literally just silently stand there, and they report you to the police, they'll come over and say, excuse me, are you praying? And if you say yes, then they'll shuffle you out of there. So praying is illegal. So watch out. Maybe God will have something to say about that. Iran and Hezbollah vow punishment and revenge for strike that killed IRGC generals. Tehran and its Lebanon-based proxy blame Israel for the attack in Damascus that killed Quds Force leaders. U.S. reportedly tells Iran it had no involvement or prior knowledge. Nothing. No, 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 no. We have no idea what happened. Iran has well vowed Tuesday to respond to a strike widely attributed to Israel that demolished Tehran's consulate. Israel says it wasn't a consulate. Uh, in Damascus and killed seven people, including two generals from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and a U.S.-designated terrorist organization. Iran State TV reported Tuesday that the country's Supreme National Security Council, a key decision-making body, met late Monday and decided on a required response to the strike. The report said the meeting was chaired by Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, but provided no further details. In an online statement, Raisi, Raisi sorry, blamed Israel for the attack, saying the cowardly crime will not go unanswered. After repeated defeats and failures against the faith and will of the resistance, front fighters, the Zionist regime has put blind assassinations on its agenda in a struggle to save itself. The evil Zionist regime will be punished at the hands of our brave men. We will make them regret this crime and the other ones, Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said in a message published on his official website. Well, what can they do? Here's the deal. Target U.S. interests. That's about it. Iran's Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian uh, held that the U.S. Resp was responsible for the attack. The Swiss charge d'affaires in Tehran who represents U.S. interests in the country, was summoned by Iran's foreign ministry early Tuesday. An important message was relayed to the American administration as the Zionist regime's supporter, Amir Abdullah Hayyan, uh, said on X, the United States should be answerable. So they could uh, attack U.S. assets in uh, global regions, mobilize proxies against Israel. Most capable proxy in fighting Israel is Lebanon's Hezbollah. So the militia is said to have uh, some 150,000 rockets and precision-guided munitions in close proximity to Israel and has proven its ability to strike deep into Israeli territory. There you go. The Houthis as well. The axis of resistance can be activated, referring to a network of pro-Iran militias in the region. They aren't likely to retaliate with massive attacks, but rather with a cascade of responses. Attack is Israeli interests abroad. After past attacks on Iran, Israel has often anticipated Iranian retaliation on its interests in foreign countries and beefed up security at its embassies. Absolutely. Um, totally possible. And take no direct military action, obviously. Just sit idly by. Unlikely that'll happen. Anything else? That's about it. All right, moving right around. Uh, record for sustaining plasma at 100 million degrees Celsius. What the heck are you talking about, Tiger? Plasma, it's a uh, element, okay? Uh, like a solid state, liquid, gas. Well, plasma is another one. It's basically like uh, electricity and heat mixed together or something like that. Um uh, the temperature is seven times that of the sun's core, which is 15 min million degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and dive in on this. And here is the core reactor here. Uh, this is a South Korean. Uh, scientists set a new world record using the Korean superconducting Takamak advanced research device, an artificial sun nuclear fusion reactor. Okay, fusion, bringing together. They're working on fission. Okay, or sorry, they're working on fusion. Fission is what they had. When they split the atom and boom, you've got the reaction. Well, now they're trying to create a fusion reaction. Uh, the team generated plasma temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius for 48 seconds during tests between December 2023 and February 2024. This temperature is seven times that of the sun's core, which is 15 million degrees Celsius. So what are they doing? What is the, what is the plan? Well, they're trying to create energy. They want to put a little in and get a lot out. So this is the future, people. 
Increasing the time spent at the temperature was tricky due to the unstable nature of the high temperature plasma, making the new record a significant step, Mr. Yoon told CNN. He added that scientists will now aim to sustain plasma temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius for 300 seconds by 2024. We'll keep you posted. 2026. Apologies. Xi, Xi Jinping, uh, tells Biden, Joe Biden, China will not sit idly by on tech restrictions. Yeah, so uh, they've been totally getting jacked up by America with regards to chips. You know, just not allowed to send them there. You guys can't have any. Uh, well, first call, Xi Jinping. Hey, yo, Joe, it's been a while. Let's talk. He told uh, Joe, we will not sit idly by if they continue to suppress China's high-tech development. And China is mega high-tech. If you look at the infrastructure over there compared to the U.S., you would be like, what's going on? Where are our tax dollars going? <clears throat> Ukraine. Uh, Xi emphasized uh, that... The United States has launched an endless stream of measures to suppress China's economy, trade, science, and technology, and the list of sanctions against Chinese companies is getting longer and longer. According to the readout of the phone call between the two leaders from the news agency, uh, Xinhua, adding, if the United States insists on suppressing China's high-tech development and depriving China of its legitimate right to development, we will not sit idly by. Perhaps invade Taiwan. They're talking about that. That's the spiciest news of the day. Court approves 3M settlement over forever chemicals in public drinking water systems. What? Well, we talked about uh, BPAs being all up in the gaff. You know what I mean? Everywhere. Uh, well, PFASs, forever chemicals, all over the gaff. Talking about Teflon. Chemical manufacturer 3M will begin payments starting in the third quarter to many U.S. public drinking water systems as part of a multi-billion dollar settlement over contamination with potentially harmful compounds used in firefighting foam and several consumer products, the cumbers said company said. St. Paul, Minnesota-based 3M announced Monday that this year's lawsuit settlement received final approval from the U.S. District Court in Charleston, South Carolina. The agreement called for payouts through 2036, depending on what additional cam contamination is found. The amount paid out will range from $10.5 billion to $12.5 billion. This is yet another important step forward for 3M as we continue to deliver on our priorities. Yeah, like, please don't sell all of our stock and shut us down. The final approval of this settlement and continued progress toward exiting all PFAS's manufacturing by the end of 2025 will further our efforts to reduce risk and uncertainty. And that's the key phrase, reduce risk and uncertainty. But they have no idea what's going to happen. This stuff is all over us. It's in our blood. It's in the placenta. It's in the ice. It's in the storms. It's all over. There's no getting out of it. Plastic bottle contamination. We covered this. You want to know what's going on in the world? Like and subscribe. Get all up in the tiger's business because this is real talk. Forever chemicals, they don't degrade naturally in the environment. They've been linked to a variety of health problems, including liver and immune system damage and some cancers. Colon cancers, collateral cancers, all on the rise. The GI tract is getting jacked. Is it possible that it could be this? 3M settlement announced in June came a lawsuit by Stewart, Florida, one of about 300 communities that filed similar suits against companies that produce firefighting foam or the PFAS, PFASs it contained. The payment will help cover the cost of filtering PFAS from the system. So yeah, there you go. Uh, what the heck? Taiwan is shaking. Breaking multiple buildings have collapsed. Jeez. That's not what we wanted. Let's get that back. Boom. Okay. Breaking multiple buildings have collapsed after a pair of massive 7.5 earthquakes straight triggering tsunami warnings. Currently a pair of powerful massive earthquakes have just occurred. The first one measured a magnitude of 7.5 followed by 7.4. Aftershock. Moments later, numerous reports indicate strong to violent shaking, multiple buildings swaying back and forth. Additionally, multiple buildings have collapsed, tsunami warnings and sirens have been activated, sounding off an emergency warning and urging residents to evacuate immediately. More videos emerging. Uh, we got some of that, so we'll check it out. Uh, I was in an, an earthquake before. It was like a 5.5. And the way the Richter scale magnitude goes is that it doubles. One, whatever. Two is double one. Three is double two and so on and so forth. So 7 is twice as powerful as a 6. They had a 7.4. I was in a 5, and it was just like the building was swaying, and everyone was like, uh... And the guy who was instructing us was like, <clears throat> no worries, happens all the time. And we were all like, uh, this building, I seen the outside, rebar was sticking out, is this thing gonna last? The answer was yes, it did. I'm here. So let's move on, let's have a look at this bridge and what it looks like. Business as usual, no problems, just continue on. Red light change green, let's go. Let's have a look at some more footage here. Here's a building looking like it's about to collapse. Oh, 
There's a leaf. No buildings falling. Great engineering. Well done, Taiwan. All right, moving right along. Should you be concerned about bovine leukemia virus in milk? Well, we covered yesterday there was a bird flu that went to cows and spreading around like five different states, and one human actually caught it. And it's in the news, and everyone's kind of like, oh, God, what do we do? Well, uh... S. Crane, one of uh, my little sig tigs, said, hey, uh, thanks for covering that. Appreciate it. Will you cover uh, BLV? And I was like, what the heck is that? Let me do a quick search. Decades ago, concern was raised that the milk of dairy cows frequently contained a leukemia-causing virus. More specifically, bovine leukemia virus, BLV, the leading cancer killer among dairy cattle. Most U.S. dairy herds are infected with the cancer virus. Thus, the question of whether dairy cows naturally infected with BLV release infectious virus into the milk is an important public health consideration. And the subject of my video is bovine leukemia virus in milk infectious. This is interesting. This is very interesting. So uh, what about beef? What about eating their beef? Is that healthy? I don't eat a lot of beef. You know, I love that hot, juicy beef, but I don't eat a lot of it. I prefer fresh, wild-caught Atlantic salmon and codfish. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania decided to put it to the test, and indeed infectious virus was demonstrated in the milk of 17 of the 24 cows tested, indicating that humans are often orally exposed to BLV. Just because we're exposed to it doesn't mean it's causing human disease, though. How do we know that BLV can even infect human cells? We didn't until 1976 when it was discovered that BLV can indeed infect humans, chimpanzee, and rhesus monkey cells. Nevertheless, that still doesn't mean BLV necessarily causes cancer in other spe species. Related, but not causal. We'll see. Researchers can't lock human infants in a cage and feed them infected milk, but they can cage infant chimpanzees, and they do. Chimps Boyce and Roger were fed infected milk, developed leukemia, and died. Until then, we didn't even know chimps could get leukemia. The fact that BLV infected milk appeared to transmit and induce leukemia in our closest living relatives certainly did raise the stakes, but human beings are not chimpanzees. Yes, our DNA may be 98% identical, but we may share 60% of our DNA with a banana. So there you go. Like, don't rest your laurels on that. We need human studies. We can't do interventional trials in this case, uh, thanks to those pesky Nuremberg principles. But what about observational studies? Do cattle farmers have higher rates of cancer? Apparently so. This finding led some to suggest that milk and egg born viruses may be highly important in the pathogenesis or development of human leukemia and lymphoma. But farmers may be exposed to all sorts of potential carcinogens, such as pesticides. Large animal veterinarians may have also have more leukemia and lymphoma, but some are also particularly lax in the use of x-ray protective equipment, so it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the viruses. We need so-called serology studies, okay? Testing people's blood for antibodies against the virus, which would prove human exposure, and we got them. Ten different studies looked for BLV antibodies in cancer patients and non-cancer patients. Creamery employees versus office employees, veterinarians, unpasteurized milk drinkers, and more. Not one of these studies found a single individual with antibodies to BLV. As a result, in 1981, the case was closed. Therefore, there is strong serological evidence to indicate that BLV is non-transmissible to man. However, the strength of the evidence is only as strong as the strength of the test. Chimpanzees Boyce and Roger didn't develop detectable antibodies either, and they died from BLV. The tests available uh, a handful of decades ago were not really sensitive. Clearly, the question of whether BLV posed a public health hazard deserves thorough investigation. Highly sensitive molecular probes need to be used. It would take a few decades for us to get such an examination. I discussed those in the landmark findings of my videos. The role of bovine leukemia in breast cancer. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at that. Up to 20% of all cancers are linked to infections, particularly viruses, and the list of potentially carcinogenic infectious agents is growing. It could be great if we found a virus that contributed to breast cancer risk, because then we could you might have new ways to prevent and treat it. Currently, the dietary link between meat and dairy and breast cancer is considered a saturated fat effect. But there is a cancer-causing cow virus that infects the mammary gland cells of cows. Infectious virus is then released into the milk supply. And since most U.S. dairy herds are infected, uh, scientists figured Americans are often exposed to this bovine leukemia virus. But we didn't have proof until 2003, 34 years after the virus was first identified. 
Early on, our best available tests failed to find antibodies to the virus in human blood. When our immune system is exposed to a virus, it creates antibodies to attack it. No antibodies, no exposure. So this led to the prevailing opinion that this virus poses no public health hazard. Now, those <coughs> were state-of-the-art at the time, but extremely insensitive compared to more modern techniques of researchers decided to re-examine the issue now that we had better tests. So, they took blood from about 250 people just to answer the question, do any humans have antibodies to bovine leukemia virus? And 191 of them did 74%. Boom. Discovered. Not that we should be surprised. By then, nearly 90% of American dairy herds were infected, and in the latest national survey, 100% of the big factory farms were infected when you test the milk coming out of those operations. So why isn't there an epidemic of udder cancer out there? Well, see, dairy, dairy cattle are hamburgered so young that there's not a lot of time for them to develop gross tumors. And that... So if you didn't hear that, that the dairy cattle are hamburgered, they're slaughtered so young, they don't have the opportunity to develop leukemia. So if they're not developing leukemia, it doesn't exist, right? Anyway, if you guys want to go ahead and follow that, uh, this guy is a doctor. Uh, let's see what his name was. It's just right up here. Uh, if you guys are interested in following this guy, it's Michael Greger, MD, founding member of Fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, Michael Greger, MD, a physician in New York, it seems. And there you go. You can go ahead and follow that. And uh, our final story today, straight black men are the white people of black people. Okay, so here we go. Let's get the virtue signaling on the go. Let's see what's happening. What's Who's whinging this time? Damon Young. All right, this is an older article, so uh, is it still relevant? We'll see. It feels counterintuitive to suggest that a black man as a whole possess any sort of privilege. It feels counterintuitive to suggest that a black man as a whole possess any sort of privilege. Why do they do that? I don't understand that. Let's go ahead and put the first line quote right here. Uh, particularly the type of privilege created for and protected by whiteness. Okay. In America, we are near or at the bottom in every relevant metric determining quality of life. Our arrest and incarceration rates, our likelihood of dying a violent death, our likelihood of graduating high school and attending college, our employment rates, our average net worth, our likelihood of surviving past 70. I could continue, but the point is clear. But assessing our privilege or lack thereof on these facts considers only our relationship with whiteness and with America. Interracially, however, our relationship to and with black women is not unlike whiteness's relationship to us. In fact, it's eerily similar. Uh, we're the ones for whom the first black president created an entire initiative to assist and uplift. We're the ones whose beatings and deaths at the hands of the police galvanized the community in a way that the beatings and sexual assaults and deaths that those same police inflict upon black women do not. We're the ones who mistreatment inspired a boycott of the NFL despite the NFL's long history of mishandling and outright ignoring far worse crimes against black women. We are the ones who get the biggest seat at the table and the biggest piece of chicken at the table despite making the smallest contribution of the meal. So whatever, this is absolutely ridiculous. Nowhere is this more evident than when considering the collective danger we pose to black women and our collective lack of willingness to accept and make amends for that truth. It's a damning and depressing paradox. So this guy sounds like a white woman, you know what I mean? Like hating on himself, like whatever. Anyway, uh, there was another Pakistani missus who came out and said, uh, climate crisis is due to men, specifically white men has nothing to do with uh like 88 of the most polluting cities of the 100 most polluting cities are in india and of course china firing up all the coal plants so there you go uh if you have a special news request you'd like the tiger to cover just go ahead and throw it down in the comments on one of my videos i'll catch it and we'll cover it she put that comment down today and guess what i'm not sure if it's a girl actually it's s crane i assumed it was sarah for some reason if it's not whatever S. Crane, you got what you asked for, and everyone can. If you want to know anything about finances, check out at Sigma Tiger Trade. We can talk about investing and stuff like that. Maybe we can get some money because the world is collapsing, and what are we going to do? Sit by and watch. Sigma Tiger, signing off.